Greetings everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about Azure ATP or Advanced Threat Protection which is a service in which you can use in order to implement security uh, for your Active Directory environment and prevent attacks uh, going through your Active Directory. Uh, this video is going to be the part one of this series because uh, it's going to be a bit long so I thought it's going to be better to have a published this video in different parts and this part is going to talk about the essentials and what basically ATP does and what are the features of that how how, how, we, how it can help us and things like that so uh, stay with me and in this part one video I'm going to talk about uh, essentials of Azure ATP so what it does Azure ATP for us before deep dive in Azure ATP and understand how does it work, it's better to take a look at Azure ATP portal to have a better understanding. The portal, as you can see, is the portal of Azure ATP, and I'm trying to navigate through different areas of this Azure ATP portal. And within this portal, as you can see, we have different type of alerts. So using Azure ATP, it can give us different alert based on the security environment and the health of the environment. Like as you can see, we have a uh, SMB attack, we have Kerberos pass ticket, things like that. So using this service, it can give us a good report of how everything is happening in our Active Directory environment. That was the portal and we will talk about this portal more in detail in later videos and in throughout this video. But it is uh, important to understand that Azure ATP is part of the Azure and you need to have a valid license of Azure Active Directory for your uh, environment if you want to use this Azure ATP in your environment. So let's go ahead and talk about what does Azure ATP for us. So the base thing is that it's try to protect the user identities and it does it very well. And basically if you look through the Azure ATP portal you can see that user identities were used in order to pass the Kerberos tickets and using Azure ATP can we can simply discover these type of attacks that are happening in our environment and then take proper action against them. So the first thing is that we can protect the user identities using Azure ATP. And another thing that Azure ATP does is that it monitors all device performing authentication and authorization against Active Directory. These devices are not simply Windows devices. It can be any devices Basically, any device that can run uh, connections to Active Directory that can be monitored because at the end, um, Azure ATP will analyze all the events related to this type of behaviors happening on uh, Active Directory domain controller. And by analyzing them, it will understand what's happening exactly on the background, what, what user one is doing. Uh, like if someone is passing the ticket to another to access another resource on another server, basically this uh, this is going to be logged in event viewer and using this uh, Azure ATP we can basically have a, a huge advantage of finding out what's going on in our environment. The next thing is that identify suspicious activities. These activities can be enumerating, can be anything related to hacking tools, things like that. Uh, if you looked closely that within my portal there was alert uh, in regards with Kerberos pasta tickets or pasta hash and things like that or golden tickets and uh, Basically all these suspicious activities will be logged by Active Directory and Azure ATP will collect all these logs and all these uh, Activities and place them into a container we can say in Azure ATP and then we can access all of them and have an understandable view of what's going on in our environment and what is the total health of our Active Directory environment uh, these suspicious activities can be past the hash attacks, anything basically related to mimic cats, uh, and tools like that. Uh, Patch the tickets, we can forge a ticket and um, access another resource using uh, another someone else ticket. These are, are identified suspicious activities that can be logged by Azure ATP and will at the end will raise alerts based on them. Or DC Shadow attack. And everything related to this kind of methods will be logged and as uh, suspicious activities. And at the end, we'll raise alerts in our Azure ATP. And uh, basically, Azure ATP 
will analyze activities based on certain events. If you want to use uh, Azure ATP in a proper way, we need to have auditing enabled in our Active Directory to log certain events. These certain events can be a list like this. So Azure ATP will look through event viewer of the main controller and analyze and gather all the events and then analyze all the events and then parse them and then send them to Azure ATP. And at the end, we will be able to look closely what's going on in our environment using all the information gathered in Azure ATP. So the basic question is how ATP works, how it can help us to have a better understanding of security in our environment, in our Active Directory infrastructure. So within ATP, let's consider an example. If we, if we have a domain, uh, the way that ATP works is by having sensors or agent installed on our domain controller. By the way, I have to say that ATP works under two modes. The first one is uh, direct sensor mode and the second one can be called uh, standalone server mode. So for now, for this example, we're going to talk about direct sensor mode. Uh, let's consider that we have a domain and inside that domain, obviously, we're going to have a domain controller. Using a domain controller in our environment, there will be so many connections happening on domain controllers. There will be so many events happening on domain controllers. Somebody wants to try to access a resource. It needs to talk to a DC for generating a Kerberos ticket and then requesting another TGS uh, to access another service and many other things like that will be have will happening on Active Directory domain controller. So the way it works is that Azure ATP will need to have an agent or a sensor installed in our Active Directory domain controller. This sensor will be on our domain controller and will gather all the events, will analyze all the events, and then it will parse all the events. And basically everything, every sort of processing will happen on the domain controller. So this agent will be responsible to processing events, to processing network captures and things like that. And once it is done, it will prepare a sort of report, uh, some kind of uh, events. And, and then once it is done, the processed information will be sent directly to Azure ATP. And then it will be stored there. And then we can use Azure ATP portal to access what's going on, to see what's going on in an Active Directory environment. This is the direct sensor mode. So it is obvious that if we have different domain controllers in our domain, all of them needs to have the sensor or agent installed on them. So this direct sensor mode has quite advantage and quite disadvantage. I'm going to talk about disadvantage. The first disadvantage is that domain controllers need to talk to internet. I know that's not very well, but uh, yes, you can have internet connection on DC, even as a proxy. And only through that proxy access to the URL of ATP Azure.com and only allow port 443 uh, in order to allow the information to be flowed to Azure ATP. So that is the first mode of Azure ATP. Basically, when you install an agent on the main controller, that agent will install the service on the domain controller and that the service will be responsible to all the processing on domain controller, uh, events, logs, uh, and uh, analyzing events and parsing events and things like that. So when you install this agent on domain controller, uh, this domain controller will be visible in Azure ATP portal. And in case that domain controller is not reachable by Azure ATP, it will raise an alert again saying that the main controller is no longer uh, receiving the uh, communication with Azure ATP. So there's something happening. You need to check that first. So that was the first thing. That was the first mode of Azure ATP. So the second method, which is quite more common today, is that using a standalone server in order to communicate with Azure ATP. In today's environment, this is clear that nobody has an internet connection on domain control unless you're in, in, in a very small environment that no one cares about security on your domain controllers. 
if you don't have internet connection on domain controller, you need to use another method for that if you want to use ATP. And that's true uh, using uh, ATP standalone server. So standalone server, what it does is again, we have, let's consider that we have a domain and inside that we have the domain controllers. But the problem here is that the domain controllers are behind firewalls and nobody can access them. In this case, we need to use a server, an intermediary server, which is called uh, Azure ATP standalone server. And on that server, we're going to install sensor. And then what it does is that without using of agents on domain controllers, the data will be sent to standalone server and on that server processing will happen. And once the data is complete and ready, the data will be sent to Azure ATP. So in that case, we won't need internet connection on domain controllers. We can, we need to use an intermediary server in order to talk to Azure ATP because we don't have internet connection on domain controllers and they are behind firewalls. But it is clear that this, it has certain advantages and certain disadvantages. Well, the, the advantage is that you, you, you will no longer need to have internet connection on domain controllers. That's, that's the truth. But the disadvantage can be that having another server acting as standalone ATP server, it's going to cost you again, because this is another server, because this is another hardware. So that is the first disadvantage. Basically, you will need internet connection on a standalone server. That standalone server will require to have internet connection to talk to Azure ATP. It can be direct internet connection or again using the proxy uh, by filtering only allowing uh, ATP.Azure.com and a specific port of 443. The second disadvantage is that you will require to have port mirroring. The port mirroring is basically what it does is that uh, if you have agent installed directory on domain controller, that agent will be responsible to analyzing all network connection coming in and coming out of Active Directory domain controller. But since this is not the case in standalone server, you need to have port mirroring and send the network a capture like uh, from domain controller to standalone server in order to, to have it analyzed to see what's going on. Because if you don't have the agent install the domain controller, you need to see what's going on on domain controller. So in that case, you need port mirroring to understand what's going on on DC. And another thing that is needed to implement is event forwarding. Because again, when you have agent directly installed the domain controller, the agent will talk to event viewer and see everything logged in event viewer. So using processing that we said, it will look through all the events that we mentioned in previous slide, and it will analyze everything based on those events and then parse the information that we sent to ATP. But since this is not the case, the events happening on domain controller, as you can see, needs to be sent to standalone server because standalone server needs to understand what's going on on the uh, on the background on the event viewers of the main controller and in that case since we don't have agent installed in uh, the main controller we need to consider implementing event forward of course this is not quite difficult to implement you can simply have event forwarding to any server but in that case you will need to have event forwarded from domain controller to intermediary server because the only server that can talk to Azure ATP is that intermediary server. But we're not going to talk about event forwarding and port mirroring in other videos. If you, in, in later videos, I'm going to talk about installation and how to, we can work with Azure ATP. But uh, the lab that I created for my Azure ATP is going to be agents installed directly on domain controllers because I don't have the possibility of touching port mirroring and event forwarding. Uh, of course, event forwarding is not a huge task to accomplish. You can basically search on the internet, but just for demo version, I'm going to install uh, agent directly on domain controller and we'll be able to talk directly to Azure ATP. So that's it.
for this video this video was part one of the series of azure atp in later video i'm going to talk about installation and uh, testing azure atp using different attacks of mimikatz uh, dc shadow and all the possible attacks that that azure atp can understand will be covered in later video i hope you enjoyed the video Please subscribe to my videos if you enjoy and comment videos you will need in later videos. I'm going to get you covered. Thanks.